Hi guys, I hope you had a wonderful Easter weekend. Um, our story of the week this week is called At Home in the Wild. And we're gonna get started learning our new words of the week. So, At Home in the Wild. <clears throat> okay, let's see, At Home in the Wild. Okay, our words for the week are sheltered, weary, hide, and wit. So we're gonna go ahead and look those words up in the glossary. So a glossary, remember, is always at the end of the book. And it's that's where I can go when I don't know a word and it's just like a dictionary, it'll tell me the meaning of the word. So our first word is sheltered. So I'm gonna hold my spot on my page where my words are and I'm gonna flip to the end of the book to find my glossary. And look, sheltered, shelter, that's a sh, sh. So that starts with an S and an H. So my glossary is always in ABC order. So I'm gonna look for my S's. I'm at F, G, H, I, J. Try to find the best angle. Okay. S, so we need S-H for sh. Sheltered, it's the very first word in the S's. So sheltered, um, a sheltered place protects from wind and rain. So an example is the cave was a sheltered place. It protects you from the wind and the rain. It's somewhere where you can go to be safe from weather, wind and rain, sheltered. Okay, now because I marked my page with my pen, I'm gonna go back and I can see my next word is weary. Weary starts with a W, then an E and an A. So W, E, and then an A. So I'm at my S's. I know that W's are further along in the alphabet. Flip to my W's. Weary, it's the first word again in the W's. So weary, weary means uh, so someone who is weary, it means that they're very tired. An example is we are all beginning to feel weary as we got closer to the finish line. So you're very tired if you're weary. So a synonym for weary is tired. I held my place here, so I'm going to go back to my power words. Our next word is hide. Hide, it starts with an H and then there's an I. So H is this way in the alphabet. I need to go back to my H's. Okay, there's H. We have an H and then an I. So there's H-A, I'm looking for H and there it is. Hide. I'm trying to find the best angle. Okay, hide. A hide is an animal's skin. An example in a sentence, the shoes are made of animal hide. So hide is a multiple meaning word. Hide can mean like I'm hiding and I'm trying not to be found, but hide can also mean um, an animal's skin. So um, leather and things like that are made of animal skins out of hide. So hide can also be a, an animal's skin. Okay, going next to our next word, back. Our last word is wit, wit, W-I-T. So I need to go back to my W's at the end of the alphabet. Here we are in our W's, W-I. So there's weary, our first word, and wit is right underneath, so wit. Wit is a talent for using words to be funny. An example in a sentence, these books are filled of wit. So wit is a talent for using words to be funny. And sometimes you can use it like witty. Someone can be witty. That means that they're very funny with their words. Wit, a talent for being, using words to be funny. Okay, those are your words for today. Let's go back to our, to our, the cover and the title of our story. As good readers, we know that 
we always need to look at the cover and think about the genre and look at the title and the pictures before we start reading and think of any questions um, and make predictions before we start reading. That way we can better understand the text. So this text this week is kind of fun because it's poetry. Okay, so poetry uses imagery, which means it's that imagery means images. It's like a mental movie. It's like when we visualize and we can see things in our brain from the words. So it uses images, sounds, and rhythm to express feelings as you read the poems in our text for today, At Home in the Wild. So we're going to pay attention to repetition. So repetition is... There's repetition, like when a word repeats, repetition, repeat, kind of sounds the same. So when you hear sounds or words repeating, that's called repetition. We're going to look for repetition and then we're going to look for words that describe because in poetry, um, the authors use a lot of words to describe things so that you can have, uh, you can visualize and have those images in your head. So we're going to look for words that describe and the last thing is we're going to be looking for rhythm. And rhythm is kind of like the beat. So like when you listen to music, you can hear a beat to it. You can hear a beat. Kind of like in poetry, you can hear a rhythm or a beat and there's a way to read it. It's Poetry is different from other genres because there are there is a rhythm. And there's a way that you read it to where you can hear a beat. So looking at the title, thinking about the genre, and looking at the illustrations, let's think about three questions that you might have before we start reading. Okay, so the title is At Home in the Wild. Okay, so here's the cover and the title, At Home in the Wild. I want you to take a look at the illustrations, look at the expression on the animal's face, it says poetry and song. Look at the colors. Okay, so just as a reader, if I wasn't here at all, and you pick this book up, what what do you what are you wondering? What do you think the story is going to be about? What questions do you have? Okay, I want you to take a second and really think about that, and I want you to write down three questions that you're wondering about this text. I mean, it could be things that you're wondering what it's going to be about. Uh, it could be questions about poetry in that genre. Um, any kind of questions that you're having as a reader. The main thing is that I want you thinking before you start reading. Okay, don't just jump into a book and just read it. Think before you start reading. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new video. And at this point, I want you to jot down three questions that you have before you start reading.